Hello, I'm Liam Bollinger, and I'd like to talk a little bit about scaffolding instruction. What it is, how to use it, and why to use it. Scaffolding is a teaching method that uses one or more techniques to create student independence. Scaffolding is the teaching equivalent of physical therapy. You start the student in a cast. Once the student no longer needs the cast, it is taken away and another form of aid is provided, like crutches or a brace, as shown here. The end goal, however, is for no aids to be needed. In this way, scaffolding is simply the use of instructional techniques and aids with the intent of eventually removing them. Scaffolding can be quite effective for bridging learning gaps. It can be helpful for any students who are behind in your course, whether they started behind or fell behind during the course. It can also be extremely useful for ELL students to receive these aids. So, some of the techniques that can be used in scaffolding that I'll be talking about today include using visual aids, connecting to background knowledge, group work, and pre-teaching vocabulary. Using visual aids refers to relating lectures and assignments to tangible objects or relatable scenarios. When in class, try to demonstrate what is being taught, or use a picture, or even draw your own examples. The same goes for assignments. Try to provide visuals for students to relate to. When I teach physics, I try to always draw out problems, usually involving a car or a sport or something else relatable, like this cannonball problem. I even include drawings like these on the tests because it makes the problem relatable. Connecting to background knowledge is very much like using visual aids. Make the content of your course relatable, instead of to visuals this time, to content that the student already knows. Try to use topics and vocabulary that the student is comfortable with to teach the current topic. For example, I would try to teach electrostatics by relating it to mass, velocity, force, and potential energy. What I am relating electrostatics to should be well ingrained in the student's head by the time the topic is reached. Group work is possibly one of the easiest techniques to use. Have students complete assignments or projects, either in class or out of class, in pairs or groups. Preferably, you should attempt to pair struggling students with students who are already comfortable with the material. This is because the goal of group work is to allow students opportunities to see other ways of successfully approaching the subject matter. In a science class, one of the easiest ways to utilize group work is through labs. The last technique that I would like to talk about is pre-teaching vocabulary. This can be done either by teaching an entire lesson on vocabulary or by providing vocabulary sheets prior to starting a new unit. Give students time to review the vocabulary before starting the actual unit. I prefer using vocabulary sheets because they are then readily available to students during the unit. It is noteworthy too that pre-teaching vocabulary is especially helpful for ELL students so that they're not struggling to comprehend both new vocabulary and the lesson simultaneously. In review, scaffolding is the provision of aids with the intent to wean students away from them eventually. It is a tool that helps bridge learning gaps and is supportive of ELL students. There are tons of techniques available to use for scaffolding. I only address the ones I find most useful. But use whatever techniques you deem fit. Just try to think of your students like a boy with a broken leg. They're not going to get better without some help. So give them that cast, then make them switch over to crutches or a brace and keep working with them toward independence. And if you would like to learn more about scaffolding or techniques, I would advise looking at these resources. And lastly, keep on teaching.